Hello everybody. This video doesn't really have a particular aim to it. I just want you to get sleepy. I just want you to get really sleepy. Um, you know, I've got about 20, 30 minutes to kill before I need to get busy making dinner. So, I thought, hey, why don't we just make some... I thought, hey, why don't we just make some... I thought, I th um, hey, why don't we just make some tingles, you know? Um, so, um, I need you to look. I need you to, um, I need you to look right here. Look at my bum right here, okay? Look at it. I need you to look at this bum right here. It looks right in there. And then, ah, oh, we got that. Okay, and, uh, so, just relax. Just relax for me, okay? still home for a while. I have this book. And I think maybe it might be a good idea. I think maybe it might be a good idea. I just shaved, by the way. My face is really smooth right now. I switched up to a new brand of razor lately. I use um, a safety razor, so you know, it's one of the, the metal handles with the opening guy and you put the uh, razor blades in there and at any rate I like those um it took some getting used to but I really like them a lot the trouble is that some razor blades kind of dull faster than others and I found a new one that I like and I just shaved my face smells awesome it feels really good. I just got lots of smooches from my partner before they went to go work on some freelancing stuff. Um, uh, so, uh, get a safety razor, get good razors, use a good aftershave that doesn't have alcohol in it so you don't dry out. And you smell really, really good and you get those smooches and you get those tingles. Alright. I have this book. Uh, so I work on the river, as you all know, but it's something you don't know. It's something that you don't know that I won't be telling you right now. Because I have a proposal for a while now. been working on my master's degree in teaching. And I started student teaching a while back while I'm at home from the river. Very, very busy guy. And my eighth graders have been reading this book a long way from Chicago, and I need to start teaching it. Or using it for teaching. to deal with um, lower grade literature because for years and years and years and years and years I have been dealing with pretty uh, heavy hitter literature and I'm prepared for that and I don't mind it and, uh, that's what I'm that's the gear that I've been cruising in cruising in Cruising in. Cruising. Been cruising in it. Cruising. 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 That's the year that I have been cruising in for a while now, but 
it's really nice to uh, slow down a little bit and take that same energy and invest it into something a little more laid back, like 8th grade lit. Actually translates quite well. You wouldn't think we'd have to leave Chicago to see a dead body. We were growing up there, back in the bad old days of Al Capone and Bugs Moran and Moran. Moran, Moran is a not very sexy way to say that name, so I wonder if it's probably Moran. Just the winter before, they'd had the St. Valentine's Day Massacre over on North Clark Street. The city had such an evil reputation that the Thompson submachine gun was better known as the Chicago Typewriter. Good story. It wasn't that nice. That's all of it. What you want to do now is get really tired and really sleepy because you almost fell over and you're falling over again. that way but they have 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 the driest hands it's really weird actually uh i don't know how i got that way uh but uh i'm jealous of it because you know when they do finger fluttering sounds it's like i do it and like you know you can hear it but it's you know that, that makes a little more noise but jesus murphy when they do it like their hands are made out of like sandpaper, like the real fine grit. So it's like, and it's so relaxing. So I don't really know how they do that. I have a mirror. It's pretty cool. postcard that um, my partner's mom sent me in the mail a while back. On it is the steamer Bell of Louisville. It's a steamboat, one of the oldest, maybe the oldest, still in operation. There's only, I want to say, maybe two of the old steamboats left that are proper steamboats uh, that are still running. The Delta Queen, everyone knows that one. That actually got decommissioned a little while ago. Anyway, I used to work there. I just about, most of what I know about working on the river, I learned on this boat right here. And she sent me a postcard with the boat on it. And on the back is a good recipe for pickled eggplant.
So there's another thing about ASMR content creators out there that I really, really like. Um, it, it's always triggered me like crazy, but I don't know what it's called. I don't know if it's a genre yet. If you can call it a genre, uh, whatever. I don't know if it has a name, but I've seen people do it here and there. Um, I don't think this is the right microphone for it. It's not the most sensitive microphone out there. Uh, it's just what I've got. Because that's how I'm living. It's what I got. But there's this thing people do when they have really sensitive microphones. I call it like proximal triggers. Where like, it's like your ears can hear or sense whatever, a difference in like where my hands would be in relation to the microphone and like sensing that difference like oh that always triggers me like crazy um oh god i feel terrible for forgetting the guy's name um i watched his videos for years and years and years and years Sensoratti, of course. If for any reason that will never happen, Mr. Sensoratti, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. I've watched this guy's content for years. He does a lot of good, um, super high sensitivity ASMR. Uh, he has a series called Godlike ASMR. It is really good. Um, that's, all of his videos are good. But a while back, he was doing this thing with this piece of paper. I don't know if he was doing this proximal trigger thing on purpose, but for a minute there, he just like had this piece of paper positioned a certain way, and oh my god, I, it was just such an uh, unusual trigger, but it triggered me so hard, I was so tingly, it was uh, insane, so surely uh, there's other people that like that kind of thing, so I'm thinking about investing in a bit more sensitive ASMR for a long time now. I want to say back in about 2012 is when I figured out that these videos are being made. And back then there weren't too many. You know, there was of course your gentle whispering. She was probably the first dedicated ASMR video that I watched. And it was one of her old ones. I don't even really remember what it was called, but she had that wooden brush and she was just like On it, and I was like, holy crap, hola. That's tangly. Them tangles. Them tangles. Anyway, there was gentle whispering, of course. And she was really good. And I had this little boy just her up in this area, and it's super relaxing. And then there was, um, Massage ASMR. That dude is a legend. He was one of my earliest favorites. Of 
course, there's Heather Feather. I believe the originator of the sk 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 If I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly, from a video a long time ago, I think she says it's a sound that her mother made to calm her down or something. Anyway, I've been watching for a long time. I discovered ASMR. How did you discover ASMR? How did you discover ASMR? I would like to know about I want to know this, because ASMR is such an odd little thing, and it's meant to be such an enormous community. How did you discover ASMR? Leave me a comment. Um, I discovered ASMR because in like 2011 or 2012, while I was a freshman or sophomore in college, I thought that it would be really relaxing to watch YouTube videos of people getting massages. And I wondered if that was a thing. Sure enough, that was a thing. And boy howdy. One of those first related videos was probably a gentle whispering video. And... There it goes. The rest is history. And I was like, what on earth is this? This is so awesome. I first discovered ASMR videos that way, but I first discovered that I have ASMR. Well, I guess I never discovered I had ASMR, because I never knew it had a name until about 2012, like I said. I never knew it had a name at all. I just thought I was a weird person, and I got relaxed watching people do procedural things. This time, one of my biggest triggers was I would be at a library checking out books, and oh man, to this day it'll get me. Um, so in my library, when I was younger, you would get your stack of books, right, just like this one, which is from my public library, and there would be this weird pad on the the surface of the counter or desk or whatever each book they would put on the pad and then like slide it across it and then flip it and put it over and grab the next book I was checking out and put it on the pad flip it and then the next one put it on this weird pad slide it a few times flip it and then doing that I would just watch and like Oh man, just tingle, bojingle, my mangle, my goodness, holy poop, 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 holy poop, oh I would tingle like a mug, I'd get super tingly, that's just a dirty old pop socket, that's probably not tingly, it's probably not tingly, it's probably not tingly, it's probably not tingly. Day. Uh, just a dumb little video to pass some time and 